scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There are people who claim to pray and they are sleeping. The moment they hear a knock on the door and you open, they now act like they are praying. You go back and say, you mean three hours you've been here. They have their reward. Their reward is the perception that you live with. But there is no energy being dissipated in the spirit. When the school of prayer. Hmm. Next verse. Please help us. This is a study. It says, but when thou prayest, enter into your closet. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father. Now look at this. He is not saying just the idea is not pray alone. You have to understand what Jesus is saying here. The idea is not refusing you from praying in public. Uh -uh. He is saying that the construct of your mindset when you pray should be that your focus should be on God. Enter into your closet. Are we together now? It's not just a literal statement to mean every time you want to pray, run into your closet. No. He's saying whether you are in the midst of people or you are alone, the moment is time for prayer. Let nothing around you distract you. Let your focus be on God. Please keep that scripture there. He says, pray to your father which is in secret. And your father which seeth in secret shall reward you openly. Verse 7. When you pray, next warning, so we are addressing hypocrisy and we are addressing focusing on men. Now he's talking about vain repetitions. Now let me correct this because I know that there are people following from all over the world. Vain repetition here as the heathen do. I love Jesus. There are repetitions that are very proper. But there are repetitions called vain repetitions. For you to understand this, you have to understand the ancient religions. They had chants that they used. Some of them were occultic. Are we together now? And there are some religions in the world that still practice it. They can chant a word or a phrase sometimes 5,000 times. You understand what I'm saying? This is what Jesus is saying. That when we approach the Father to pray, we should not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think they shall be heard for their mouth speaking. He is not saying you should not talk. He is not saying you should not repeat prayer points. A lot of people have misunderstood this scripture. And every time they ask God for something, they feel guilty for asking again. The Bible says Jesus prayed three times using the same words. The same words. Verse 8. Be not therefore like them, for your heavenly Father knoweth the things that ye have need of. Now, this is a very powerful information, but it's also very fearful. God, why should I then pray, since you know the things that I need? Jesus is speaking, and he said nothing about your request is a shock to the Father. He's omniscient, all-knowing. But why... Do you have to pray? There are many reasons. Maybe the last session will deal with that. But one of the reasons why we have to pray is because God gave man a will. There are seven things God gave man, not a spiritual man. Man as the zenith of his creation that stands us out from all other creations. One of it is the will. 
the day God gave man a will it became scripturally incorrect for God to veto on man's will and make assumptions without the man making petition and demand are we together even at the expense of your eternal destiny God does not impact eternal life by force on you as merciful and as loving as he is if you do not verbalize and make a declaration of your need for Jesus he will respect your will until you go to hell that's how powerful God's honor for the will of man is so believing that God will arbitrarily just come into your life and over your situation without beckoning on him may leave you in shock and leave you in disappointment there are people going to hell today and in spite of the reality of the finished work of Christ the substitutionary sacrifice he still respects their will he met blind Bartimaeus on the way to Jericho and he says what should I do for you what do you think a blind man will want don't say the opening of eyes what if he wanted money in the book of Acts remember the guy who was crippled he did not want to be healed he was asking for arms not everyone in trouble wants to come out oh I have learned this in ministry not everyone down wants to go up you have to honor and respect the will of people if they want to remain where they are you leave them honorably there trying to feed a man who is not hungry may put you in trouble so God allows you to verbalize your desire your desperation and he responds to it now let's discuss prayer 6 verse 9 he says after this manner therefore pray ye koinonia listen let's discuss prayer now pattern number one our father everybody please say it. our father he's teaching us to pray that every time you are about to pray the first consciousness in your heart should be the fatherhood of God you are not praying to an archangel you are not praying to some deity somewhere even though God is the God of the universe he's the ancient of days El Gibor etc but when you approach God in prayer the name should be Abba father you know what father means source from the word Abba it means my source it means my sustainer it means my defender carry this mindset when you pray that the person you are praying to even though he's the God of the universe he is my father God of wonders beyond our galaxy you are holy holy God of wonders beyond our galaxy that God that created the heavens and the earth is my father Romans chapter 8 and verse 15 please the consciousness of the fatherhood of God media let's work together Romans 8 15 the Bible says for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we who are in Christ we now have a right to call him Abba father my source I'm not coming to someone who I'm hoping wants to bless me I'm coming to someone who is obsessed about defending my interest I came from him he's saying this mindset must govern your approach to prayer if you come as though you are meeting a stranger you are submitting a CV before someone whose intent you don't know it is important you know that God is interested in you Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11 please let's hurry up Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11 now look up please Jesus is contrasting earthly fatherhood he's speaking about fatherhood now if ye then being evil fathers now know how to give good gifts my goodness my God look at this you know what Jesus is saying he's saying men even though you people are sinners 
the sin nature is actively at work in you yet as powerful as the sin nature is it could not kill away the compassion of a father as as evil as you are terrorists still take care of their children is that true as evil as they are their children still return home daddy how are you an armed robber just returned from killing another person yet he can kiss his child that's how powerful fatherhood is when you say abba father you understand this a terrorist can kill any other person but he will not kill his children as cruel as he is he still has compassion enough to know so the bible says when you approach god realize like a child you are coming to a responsible father and here the bible gives us the classic sign of fatherhood fatherhood is not the ability to give birth to children the real proof of fatherhood is your ease to give your ease to release that you are not just a father because you have biological children in god's mind if you are truly a father he measures your fatherhood by your ability to give so when i say my father i'm coming to the one who has made me a receiver because he's a giver this should be your construct we're discussing prayer here prayer that prevails Abba Father. i'm coming to him and i'm coming with certainty god is a giver he will not withhold any good thing from me i'm not hoping and wondering i'm not thinking of which angel will help me lobby him no father keep that scripture there please it says if ye then be evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that want it look at your bible to them that fathers don't just give good things to those who want this father gives good things to them that ask he loves you enough to respect your will if you don't ask he assumes you are aware but not interested ye have not because he ask not look at me do you know how many things we would have cheaply received in our lives only if we had the grace to ask many years ago a gentleman i noticed he was always uneasy around me i think he wanted to ask for something i don't know if it was a shoe or some money and truthfully speaking one day i told him i said why are you always like this he used to help me just clean the house around and then he stood stood wondering and eventually he told me something he wanted to do and he needed some money and it was not just much when he told me that thing i felt sad do you know why I felt sad? I felt that I have been too nice to this boy. I had taken him as a son too much for him to be in such fear to ask me. In his presence, I had given to strangers. In his presence, I had done. That's how God feels insulted when you leave him and go to a herbalist and he's watching you. He's saying, is what who taught you about my fatherhood? Whoever taught you that if you come to me, I cannot help you. Who mentored you to not know that I am a giver? You see the reason why serving other gods touch him? Because he believes that he has, he has brought rain on both the godly and ungodly. He has done too many things for those outside the kingdom. Enough to convince you. Every responsible father here. If your child sees you giving 100,000 to your security, will you give him 100,000? He knows he's worth more than that to you. He can have an idea of what he will receive from what he sees you giving outsiders. So to know how much God can give me, I look at unbelievers and say, what did he give them? He gave them mercy. He gave them rain. Now we are talking of a family affair. So I come to him. Abba. Someone shout Abba. It's true. When you come to him. Know that he is your source. 
he wants to know that he's not plan a when you call him abba you verbalize your total dependence on him lord i'm not coming to you as plan a that i'm trying there is one horn or one 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 javelin that was given to me by one um one native doctor to hang and watch in case you fail me i quickly use it to save myself from embarrassment let me tell you this do you know why god seems to show up for people at their last point that's when they've given up on all the options there is an attribute of god that is unless it is taught it looks like a very negative attribute it's called his jealousy have you read that god is a jealous god now jealousy is not a negative attribute in fact it is jealousy do you know that the foundation for responsibility is jealousy you cannot be responsible over something you are not jealous about parents you have a child now the moment you hear the cry of your child it is your jealousy that provokes you to want to say what is that so when the bible says god is a jealous god there is something in you that is connected to him when he hears your cry he can't pretend that it is not you he knows the sound Abba, my father when you approach god in prayer let him be your source your everything not plan b not to drop a bible you drop a charm a talisman and say i'm praying to a universal deity i don't insult your convictions there are people following from all over the world in as much as i respect your spiritual orientation this is a platform that advocates jesus so let me have the confidence to do it unashamedly you will not listen listen to me you cannot mix jesus and a charm jesus and something in your pocket jesus no wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name do you believe what i'm saying so let me advise you i know that this is africa and i don't mean to insult your pedigree i think believers we have to get to a point where we must be willing to take god seriously by folding other gods that we have a god that you carry is that powerful enough Many people have gone into traditional worship simply because the advocacy of prayer that had been proposed either to fail them. So don't be hard on anybody you know who is practicing Christianity and tradition. We are not here condemning. We are helping people to see that it's not necessary when you know God as Abba. Hallelujah. I look around and I see a few little children, our young ones, just scattered in the congregation. And I can almost discern the extent of confidence you see those little kids. You'd come as an usher or as a protocol to bully them. They came to church with the consciousness that they are under the defense of their father. They don't care who you are, what department, that is your business and those organizing it. As far as they are concerned, my confidence the only trouble in their life is when their fathers or their parents get up and want to walk away that should be your true fear if your father is not there it is worth being afraid of that's why jesus rebuked them he said why the fear you are looking at the storm am i not in the boat if the boat will capsize, will it throw you and leave only me? If they kept quiet, we would have read something else today. 
would have read a boat that was elevating in the midst of the storm they stopped us from seeing another dimension of god they downgraded his power through their unbelief let's hurry up abba father number two the second revelation about prayer please keep that scripture matthew chapter 6 we're still discussing verse 9 matthew 6 verse 9 please media help us verse 9 abba father second revelation which art in heaven look up please this means that every time you approach god your faith must be alive are we together now because he is in a domain and a realm that is higher than this three-dimensional sphere so you will need faith which art in heaven even though he's everywhere but heaven is his throne the earth is his footstool that means it will require faith the one you are communicating with is so real yet he's not visible to the optical eyes it will require faith to strengthen your conviction that even though you are talking he's listening to you what a god his feet his legs are in the earth the bible says the earth is his footstool and yet you talk whether in a whisper or in a shout he still hears which art in heaven hebrews chapter 11 when you read verse 6 hebrews 11 it says but without faith it is impossible to please god look up believers why for he that cometh to god must come with this conviction that he is that means he exists don't come hoping is he really alive jesus is alive forever he's alive amen remember that song he's alive he's alive jesus is alive forever he's alive Your situation to say where is the God can you see him just because to build a job a relationship many of you have friends you have never seen yet you are so close to them you can feel the impulses of their emotions why are you feeling bad today and he tells you I have a bad day yet you've never seen him they that worship him was worship him in spirit and truth please someone say he's alive that means when you approach God in prayer, remember which art in heaven. He's in heaven yet he's with you. So we say he's here. An unbeliever looks at this and says, how stupid a statement. He's here? Where? Where is his chair? That's the carnal man. It's a mystery. How could he be seated on the throne, seated in my heart, and still in the room? What sort of a God is that? Anywhere there is a throne, he sits there. There is a throne in heaven, he's seated. There is a throne in my heart, he's seated. When we build him a throne in this place, he sits. If your home builds him a throne, he sits. Anywhere he finds a throne, that means he's crown king. He will come to honor you. Could that be why he's not found in your home? You have built yourself thrones, but you have not built him a throne. He shall reign. He shall reign. He shall reign forevermore. Crown him king of kings. Crown him Lord of Lords. Listen. Which art in heaven means you will require faith all the time. Without faith, there are things you cannot believe. Without faith, you cannot receive. Remember the scripture I taught you, Mark 11 verse 24. What things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have them 
you can never have what you have not received receiving is a spiritual thing i received that miracle i received that job and you are laughing as if you have it genuinely and unbelievers look at you they keep mocking till they start celebrating next instruction to help us with prayer hallowed let's hurry up it says hallowed be your name verse 9 please keep verse 9 first samuel chapter 2 and then 30 hallowed be your name hallowed be your name means in spite of his fatherhood you must approach him with the spirit of reverence please look up the revelation of the fatherhood of god can so affect us it can get to a point in our lives where we trivialize him like many people have so he reminds you that even though you approach him with confidence you must approach him from a standpoint of reverence it's called Yirat Adonai the fear of the Lord it's not enough to believe in God you must revere him please give us that scripture Samuel he said wherefore the Lord God of Israel said I said indeed that my house and the house of my father should walk before me forever but now the Lord said be it far from me for them that honor me look up believers I will honor and they that despise me I will lightly esteem that means not take them seriously you must approach God with honor this is where the balance and, and I say this with every sense of respect Pentecostals and Charismatics have made a big mistake and a mess of the revelation of things like the grace of God and the fatherhood of God because in a bid to instill confidence in people to approach God sometimes if we are not careful we erode away the healthy reverence to have for God and God has a way of bringing you back to order when you dishonor him too much he has a way of doing something spectacular in your life that will reduce you back to say God I fear you he says now that you are back let's continue the way it used to be have you seen fathers remind their children and say hey, hey, hey it's alright you are jumping on me but remember this man you are jumping on is also CEO he's not just your father I've allowed you to climb my neck is enough you can climb my neck and play you can climb my neck and do whatever but by the time you bring spoon and say let's eat together and it becomes a habit then the father says no this is daddy's cup this is daddy's spoon the child leaves feeling bad but the father is happy because that is a balance otherwise it will graduate to dishonor one day you will do what the mother is doing the mother is playing with her husband and the child will come and slap the father too so he reminds you he did not marry you see the balance this is God there is a weakness in men every time great men are too available the temptation for dishonor is around the corner so there is always a way it's a weakness in men is the reason why even sociologically speaking most great men sometimes intentionally just create that difficulty to approach them as a way of reminding you that they did not get there by mistake when they give you access and they study your sense of honor or dishonor when they find out that the closer you are coming to them the more your dishonor is dropping they peg you there and you don't move forward from there maybe this is a lesson for someone to learn that may be why a door that was once open closed against you because great people gave you unusual access and the revelation of their fatherhood was there but you missed the reverence part it's a combination of lion and lamb god is not only lamb he is lion you don't play with a lion you can play with a lamb because you see a lamb that later becomes a sheep does not have horns it can't hurt you it will only depend on the safety of the shepherd but the lion will tear you into pieces god is both he is both depending on who you are let me tell you this there are sights of god that are very fearful never miss the reverence part there are times that I return maybe from a crusade or from a meeting and I see the wonder working power of God and sometimes I go down my knees and I say God Almighty 
I don't only believe you, I fear you. Maybe God is speaking to someone who has been trivializing God. You walk to him casually. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I didn't ask you to die for me. You died for me. Now listen carefully. Here are my prayer requests. We call it confidence. Number one, I'm tired of this pay scale. Raise me up. Two, I am this. And we blackmail him. And then we wrap everything up. Uh, I expect between now and the next two weeks. If you are really God. Please listen. I'm not being sarcastic. never allow your reverence for God to erode no matter how close you get to God or greatness do not ever forget that greatness still remains greatness please this is a word of caution leaders maybe this is why many great people do not invite you to their tables again they have seen that you do not know how to manage the system of greatness no matter how God, even if God comes to jump around, you know, once in a while you see him warning his disciples because they got too used to him. And say, hey, before your father Abraham, I am for that information. Don't you think you are just two years older than me, Peter? Ah, I know they killed all my age mates from two years and below. Don't you ever think we're age mates before your father Abraham was. When he resurrected in John 21, he said, little children, have you any catch? They were used to him by now. None of them say, ah, God, you are, he's the ancient of days. That means you should never be ashamed of going down on your knees. You should never be ashamed of rolling before him. He deserves it. It is not, you are not, you are not, you're not ignoring the fact that you're his righteousness. You're not even ignoring your oneness. You are balancing the revelation of his fatherhood. You are letting him know that no matter how free you are with me, oh God, you are still the God of the universe. There are young people here, let me give you a counsel. This may be the reason why many great people in your life don't pay attention to you again. They gave you access that not even their senior executives have and you trivialize it oh i can call that man's number let me put it on loudspeaker you'll see the man loves me so much when they discern that you do not know how to protect and preserve access they will withdraw it are we learning something this night hallowed be your name Boldness, according to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, should not be mistaken for pride and dishonor. Hebrews 4 and verse 16 says to come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Boldness is coming knowing that every sin and everything that can stand as a blockade has been gone. Why? Through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, his son. Now he has become a new one, a living way. He's given me access to the father now. I come without a sense like Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt, inferiority, nor condemnation. Yet, in the midst of it, that reverence will still be there. Even in heaven, they still bow. Yes, sir. Even in the throne room, they still bow. You don't find anybody just running around the throne room and say, it's my father's house. There is still order. Satan is not there. Yet, there is still order. Hallowed be your name. Next verse, verse 10. 6 verse 10. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Please look up. I can spend the whole night, even if this were a vigil, discussing this one scripture. This is Jesus teaching us on prayer. Let's do a quick recap. He says, when you pray, this should be your understanding. That you are praying to the Father, 
you will require faith because it's in a realm that is not earthly are we together that you must approach him with the spirit of reverence and then your priority as far as the manifestation is not just your need pray that his kingdom comes you know what his kingdom is the kingdom of god look up please the kingdom of god represents the life the culture of heaven it talks about the sovereign rule of heaven finding expression that you pray that his kingdom would come how by his will being done so his kingdom only comes where his will is being done wow do you know what god's will is i wish above all things the spirit of god speaking through the apostle that he prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. that's the will of god it is not his will that any man perish but that all come into repentance let me tell you this please look up if the will of god is really done in your life you may not have a prayer request again are you seeing what he's teaching you he's saying that even though i will answer your request the reason why you still have prayer requests is because the kingdom has not truly come and his will is not yet done that if the will of god is allowed to be enforced you would not have any request again so more than the prayer requests that seem to multiply by the day pray that his influence through his will find expression in your life if the kingdom comes your life must be a replica of heaven question did you ever see any angel making a request in heaven did you ever see any four and twenty elder making a request in heaven did you ever see any of the living creatures all that happens in heaven is worship do you know why because the kingdom has found expression so if the kingdom comes to your house you will not even need to say god what about this issue of school fees the kingdom of god is not just some cloud the kingdom of god is god's will and god's intent in its entirety finding expression in your life someone say your kingdom come hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done it's a prayer hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done imagine what happens to nigeria if his kingdom comes and his will is done imagine what happens in africa if his kingdom comes and his will is done imagine what happens to your political career to your business listen let me tell you this when the kingdom of god comes upon your business don't think you'll be praying in tongues around you will see heaven in a way that will bring everyone to say what is this when the kingdom of god came and met a man inside a den of lions not even the lions could hurt him that's kingdom come when the kingdom of god came upon samaria through the prophecy of one man the bible says in 24 hours by this time tomorrow and four lepers were the instruments that were used do not trivialize you know most times when we say the kingdom come we just think evangelism so winning no kingdom come is more than just soul winning kingdom come is the reality the the full span of the sphere the intents the culture the desire of the king being superimposed in a life listen to what it says it says matthew chapter 6 please give us verse 10 it says your kingdom come your will be done in earth not on earth in earth and like you've heard me say the first earth is you you are that earthen vessel so let the kingdom come in my life let the kingdom come in my business let the kingdom come in my destiny let the kingdom come in my church when you pray your kingdom come by your will being done 
it's a very powerful thing look at me brothers and sisters we have subliminally been taught that the will of god is always to our destruction you know most people hate saying thy will be done because they suspect that if you ever give god a chance his will will so frustrate you so when we say your will be done especially for something that we already have our own plans lord i don't know if it's your will to collect this job that cbn is just giving me but your will be done when your mind has said god if you try it it will play with me i just got a job in cbn i'm saying your will be done so people will hear it but you too you know listen his will is what made heaven heaven if you doubt what his will can do look at heaven heaven is what happens when the will of god is not resisted I repeat heaven is what happens when his will is not resisted thy kingdom come your priority should be his kingdom when his kingdom comes drugs violence armed robbery corruption all of these things will fade away Remember the Bible talks about a new heaven and a new earth. The old one folding like a carpet. That's what happens when his kingdom comes. Let me tell you something. If you're having problem in your workplace, your company, you don't just need good leaders. You don't just need intelligent people. What you may need, truthfully speaking, is his kingdom to come. Kingdom come is not just for the advantage of Christians alone. You are saying heaven and its reality. Let it find expression. There is no recession in heaven. There is no up today and down tomorrow in heaven. A description of heaven is what Proverbs, I think chapter 4 and verse 18, I hope I'm right. It says, but the path of the just is as a shining light. It says, shining ever brighter, more and more. There is no better yesterday. Reject that thing over your life. Your yesterday should never be better than your tomorrow reject that kind of life that that plateaus and then you start plunging down that is the that is a a dangerous heritage that africa tries to propose to us that you rise to a point whether in ministry whether in life and they say it's your time afterwards fade away i reject it the bible says the path of the just 30 years after now we're still shining listen it is unto you according to what you believe hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.